So the Kansas City Chiefs are absolutely loaded. And when I say they're absolutely loaded, it's like they literally have a monster team. And to be honest with you, this team is just insanely stacked. Now, I'm not saying that the Kansas City Chiefs were never stacked because we are always usually stacked. But last year, we had a lot of struggles when it came to the wide receiver call. We also had a lot of struggles in the red zone. But now this season, it looks like this team is equipped for literally everything. And it looks like they're ready to reflect on all of the mistakes that they made last season. So the Kansas City Chiefs, they have a wide receiver core that's starting to look above average. And the reason why I say that is because they have a lot of speed. Like, you can even debate that the Legion of Zoom is back. I mean, the speed is crazy. They also got some physical guys up, to, up in there. And they got a, a very good running back in Isaiah Pacheco, who you can make an argument for that. He's a top 10 running back in this league. And now that he's not going to have the box stacked on him like previous seasons. Because that year when we was playing with the, um, when we played to beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes, he didn't have a deep ball. You know, most of his yards came off yard after catch, which is cool. And then last season, obviously Mahomes didn't have his best year. And Pacheco also had a lot of attention on him. And the, the box was being stacked a lot. But now this season... There's no way that anybody could stack the box against Isaiah Pacheco because if you do that, then you got Hollywood Brown and Xavier Worthy on the perimeter to make you pay. So stacking the box against Isaiah Pacheco isn't the best idea. So now that Isaiah Pacheco is going to be able to run more freely, and he's going to have better rushes, he may pop off for 1,000 plus yards. And I think he's a dark horse to have one of the best seasons for the Kansas City Chiefs this year. I don't think a lot of people are recognizing what this offensive change means for Isaiah Pacheco. So that's why I say the Kansas City Chiefs are loaded and they have a lot of talent. And they also have a very good offensive line. Like if you look at Creed Humphrey, Joe Tooney, Trey Smith, and then Jawan Taylor, who I personally believe he had a very underrated year. I feel like Jawan Taylor wasn't really as bad as people think. Yeah, he got penalties and stuff like that. But I think I still think he had a pretty solid year, if you ask me. And then you have Kingsley, the left tackle, who I believe could do something very well his first year. And I don't think he's going to be Tristan Wirth, so he'll be the best left tackle in the NFL. But I do believe he's going to have a very above-average rookie season for a left tackle spot. So that's something to monitor right there. The offensive line... Top tier. The wide receiver core. Top tier. The running back room. I wouldn't say top tier, but we do have a top tier running back. And then if you look at running back two or running back three, I mean, it, it, you could argue CEH had a pretty good season last year as well. I think CEH season was pretty decent. It wasn't bad at all, you know. So I'm not going to lie. CEH, he had, he had a pretty good year. Um, Isaiah Pacheco, great year. And then with the third running back spot, that probably goes with the Nerick Prince or Carson Still, Lewis Reed Samet. We still don't even know how that's going to go. And then when you talk about wide receiver, there's so much talent at wide receivers. Like, we literally have 10 wide receivers competing right now. And Montreal Washington has even been solid. And he looks like he has no shot to make the roster. And he looks amazing. So it's really Justin Ross, above average. He's been cooking. He's been killing his competition. And then Nico Romillo, who's been also doing very well. Then you got Justin Watson, who just got back. Tony, who just got back. And it sounds like the Chiefs are going to keep Scott Moore because it was some type of role talk. Like they said Scott Moore's going to have to embrace his new role. Actually, let's touch up on that. So with the Scott Moore and the role talk. So it's like Scott Moore, he's embracing his new role for the 2024 season. And there's something that Kansas City hopes that he can do. I mean, Scott Moore, he was a 2022 second round pick. He was supposed to be on the verge of a breakout season last year. You know, he was a standout in training camp that year. Heading into his second season, he seemed more comfortable with the offense. He had plenty of opportunity to produce and take over that juju role. That's what we really thought. But it just never came together, man. It literally never came together. And his second season looked almost identical to his first 21 catches for 244 yards. And that's after having 22 receptions and 250 yards in his rookie campaign. So that was really bad. It really looked like he regressed, you know. 
he really regressed and now his third season it's, it's gonna be different man it's, it's gonna be different for Scott Moore I don't know it's gonna be really bad for him he's not gonna become a star Hollywood Brown Xavier Worthy obviously the Chiefs made moves and improvements to their wide receiver room that's where Hollywood and Worthy those two speedsters that obviously bolstered the Chiefs wide receiver room and we know that and you add those pieces to Rasheed Rice and we have the potential to be one of the best trios or the best trio in the league. So Sky Moore is going to be awkward for him. You know, he could be an ideal candidate for routes over the middle. He's going to be like a guy that comes in sometimes. I feel like he's not going to really be getting that much. Like, you know, he's not going to get that much snaps. But at the end of the day, I really think we should really just cut him. But it seems like the Kansas City Chiefs aren't trying to do that. But now that Brown and Worthy is on the team, Sky Moore could shift to a place at receiver where he could thrive in the areas that he's best at, you know. So he should get chances to get open due to Brown and Worthy doing their thing. But Sky Moore just, I don't know, he just doesn't find himself. Like, he just can't find his footing in this league. So I really don't know what to say when it comes to him. Well, he could thrive in a secondary role like how Noah Gray does behind Travis Kelsey at tight end. And I don't know. We'll have to see what Moore does. You know, we'll definitely have to see how this all works out for him. But if he's, you know, getting catches sometimes and even doing what he has to do, that's going to even help the Chiefs team even more. It makes him even more deadly. The Kansas City Chiefs, they made it their mission to always get Patrick Mahomes some protection up front and that's since we had that horrible Super Bowl loss against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers so now they're planning to re-sign Creed Humphrey they're planning to re-sign Trey Smith but they didn't mention Joe Tooney but we never gonna talk about it we never gonna talk about it and then we talk about Lewis Reed Zammett I've been making some videos on him as well um Dave Tobe said Lewis Reed Zammett his progression is looking pretty solid but he does have some major hurdles that he's going to have to get past and some Real world major business. hurdles That's that he's going to end up having to get through but he's been doing great he's been doing a good job as a returner so he's going to also help contribute to this Kansas City Chiefs team and it just makes this team scary and then you got Matt Ariza who's a unique punter it's just it's insane man honestly it really is but yeah man all in all I expect the Kansas City Chiefs to have a great year and they're just absolutely loaded. I don't know how the league are continuing to let them get away with this, let them improve their team like this. It's just going to lead to more Super Bowls. It's going to lead to more playoff success. And the 3P just seems inedible at this point. But we'll see how it goes. I don't want to get too cocky, but it's hard not to be cocky when your team literally went back to back and they didn't win a Super Bowl too long ago from that time when they went back to back. But it's me, your boy, Chiefs Harder, and I'm out, man. Peace.